I think it is. Corn? Meet the Brett family. Ooh. Is it ready to eat? It's like... Nathan, Simone, and their two boys, Noah and Theodore. You have corn on a farm. I think we're all friends. Oh, shit. Yeah. No. You don't see Here, any bees? Corn. I see corn. Here at Day Spring Farms near Athens, Georgia, 87 acres of organic wheat and corn lay the foundation for this family's way of life. On this episode of Grow, we're following the journey of day spring wheat from the farm to a craft brewery as we explore the value of local food systems. My name is Nathan Brett with Day Spring Farms. I'm a co-owner with my dad, uh, Murray, and uh, we specialize in small grains. My oldest son and I started Day Spring Farms in 2011 after evaluating a few excesses in our lives after the recession, and we wanted to recover a better way of life, not necessarily an easier way of life, but a better way of life. Day Spring Farms is, is actually originates with my dad. He grew up on a farm and kind of wishes he's never left. I grew up in shouting distance from my grandfather. And I loved it. I, I, I could see him walk out of the back door of his house. And uh, the, the, the way of life that he had together with his closest friends, none of them had enough equipment to farm their own lands. When it came time to plant or came time to harvest, is they, were, they were all helping one another. They all um, loved each other. They, they cared for each other. They cared about one another. And they, they, were, they helped each other. I, I saw that kind of... Uh, tight relationship, close relationship with them, with them, and it made a big impression upon me, something I want. Uh, so um, it's something we thought about uh, seeking to recover when we uh, bought this place. And one of the greatest values for me has been in the last seven years, growing together with Nathan. I love my father. I love working alongside him. And, and I think that it's it's important for for my for my boys to be able to see um, to see that and to grow and learn how to do it as well. And I want to learn how to live together with my with my father. I want to learn how to get live together in in peace and harmony with my with my wife with my boys. And so it's it really has you know it really has been like that's the driving the driving mission is reclaiming a better way of life. It is not easy. To, to deal with uh, breakdowns in equipment and so, you know, or, or crops that don't turn out the way you want them to. And so there's, there's, always, that, there's always that tension and, and for us, you know, we have, we have made a, a point from, from day one to, our, our biggest mission is to, to learn how to live together. So we've grown together, and it's wonderful. Uh, we've grown together to be better men, more, um, more responsible for each other, more faithful to one another, uh, not, not willing to ever go our separate ways, but always willing to uh, try to see the other person's um, perspective, point of view, uh, values. We're able to take all the raw grain that we produce here on site and turn it into flour. Uh, for, our, for our wheat, we turn it into flour, and then uh, corn, we are able to turn into stone ground grits and cornmeal and polenta. So that's, that's kind of what we, what we specialize in. Nathan and I can process about 100 pounds a minute together. Uh, so it goes through the cleaner. Uh, there's, a, there's a process by which it takes all the chaff and dirt and dust and uh, small seed, uh, weed seed, um, crack seed, takes all that out and, and then it goes onto the gravity table and that gravity table is a, is a more refined process uh, in the cleaning uh, industry in order to 
make a baking or a, an eating quality grain. I'd say when in, when it comes off that gravity table, it's probably about 98, 99, 99 plus percent pure. I usually am the one who handles the bag on the bagging scale and then uh, lift it over to Nathan. Nathan sews it up and palletizes it. And then we store it inside our building in there in 2,000 pound units. We plant it, we harvest it, we, we clean it, process it, and then, you know, whether our end users are getting just the, the raw grain, whether it's, you know, whole corn, we have a mill that, that, that purchases from us, um, purchases corn to turn into grits. And we also have a lot of, a lot of uh, restaurants and also breweries that are buying the raw grain to use. So we're able to, we're able to kind of have, have our hands on the whole process all the way through and make sure that we're producing the very best quality product uh, from start to finish. I grew up on a commercial farm. Um, we used chemicals in the 70s and 80s. A great deal, and um, I don't. I think there's a link between uh, poor health, uh, disease, and uh, some of the conventional methods of farming. And I think there is a link between uh, good health and uh, good nutrition, good food. The corporate farm, you know, it it benefits corporate interest. It doesn't benefit, you know, the family farm. And you see, there's far fewer family farms now than there ever have been before. And uh, even, even though there's a resurgence, we're still, I mean, we're still fighting an uphill battle trying to convince everybody that it may cost more uh, to buy it direct from a farmer as opposed to buying a commodity product. But there is, there is attention to detail. There is, there is love, blood, sweat, and tear that, that goes into, into the production of, of, these, of these products. I think you know, we're, we're highly conscious of what we do uh, here. We're highly conscious of the environment. We're highly conscious of being good stewards of our land. In large scale, conventional, com like commercial farming, is, is, it's not the most responsible way to do it. Um, you know, we, here, on, here at Dayspring, we pay a lot of attention to uh, making sure that our plants are you know, have the best possible, our, our crops have the best possible start and, and growing conditions that we can possibly provide. Obviously, we can't control everything, but, but everything that we can control, we seek to, we seek to make the best, the best use of, of all of our resources and, and be responsible for, for our, our natural resources and, and, and you know, all, everything, that we, everything that we have, we seek to try and be as responsible as possible. And I think it's just, I think it's just good stewardship. And I think that's that's important. It's important for me as I seek to, you know, um, orchestrate my life in order to be a principled a principled man, um, seeking to raise my raise my boys to be principled men. Look, can you count them? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. The 16 rows of corn. That's good corn. Can I eat it? Yes, you may. Bucky. I don't want to cut corners. I don't want to take shortcuts. Um, so it may be a hard, it may be a difficult way to, to do it. It's certainly, not, it's certainly not an easy way of making a living, but it is a good way. There's a lot more than to taste and nutrition uh, other than just the seed itself. It's um, what goes into it and the care that's taken of um, it. So we, we're conscious of that, highly conscious of it. We, we want to be good stewards of what we do also. We certainly want to be responsible in all areas. And it just, it doesn't, to me, it doesn't seem responsible to have our, like a vast majority of our, of our food system supported by, you know, the trucking industry. I mean, that, that like, I don't, I don't have, I don't have any, any disrespect for, for those guys that are, that's the way they make a living. Um, but it just doesn't seem responsible to me to be, you know, to be importing food from other parts of the country. You know, Georgia, 
um, in and of itself is has a little bit of everything for everyone. I mean, uh, the growing the growing conditions and the growing climate in Georgia can really support far more of of our of our community and our 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 needs than than what what we're really making use of. So for us, it is it is a mission. Uh, for us to seek to build um, inroads into our community to to bring life, to bring to bring help, bring hope, bring peace, um, and you know, my dad and I work that out every single day. For the Brett family, Day Spring Farms is as much their home and business as it is a central part of their mission to support their community and the environment. It's a mission shared by local craft brewery Creature Comforts where brewmasters collaborate with Nathan and other local farmers to build community, support local food systems, and create a more sustainable future. After the break, Nathan takes us on a drive to Creature Comforts as we follow the journey of wheat from the farm, to the brewery, to the pine glass. Stay tuned, Grow will be right back. back to grow. We're following the journey of organic wheat from Dayspring Farms to Creature Comforts, a craft brewery in Athens, Georgia. extremely grateful for for the relationships that I've developed with the guys at Creature Comforts over the years. I mean it, it really is a it really is a friendship. It's it's I mean I, I enjoy spending time with those guys. Like every time I go down there, um, it seems like you know a delivery that should take a couple minutes generally takes like 30 minutes to an hour just because we're catching up. We're having, you know, we're we're enjoying um, each other's company. We're you know we're engaging in, in, a, in a friendship and that's that's that to me is is important. My name is Blake Tires. I'm the wood seller and specialty brand manager here at Creature Comforts. We really try to work with local producers as much as possible. It's fantastic to work with the Bretts and, and what we can do for that family. Um, and to have that relationship with them, it just feels great to have ingredients show up, um, you know, with a handshake instead of, um, you know, coming off of a big, massive, you know, 18-wheeler. Uh, but at the same time, I think, you know, using their grain actually has a distinct uh, footprint on our beer where um, having that be a consistent through all these beers, it, it becomes part of just our house flavor and house character. You know, local ingredients, uh, for me, really offer just kind of a unique take um, and, uh, and some unique flavors, uh, some terroir, if you will, um, to make our beer stand apart from others. I know there's 6,000 plus breweries now, and so people are always looking for a way to sort of have some sort of uniqueness about their beer. And uh, when we source things like honey or raw wheat um, from a local farmer that has a story, it also has some unique qualities that we can uh, really appreciate and, and sometimes really come through in the beer. We were able to start kind of get in the door with Creature Comforts very, very early on. I think they had just, they had just opened up and I met a couple of the guys um, up there and we began a conversation about what we were doing on our farm and kind of trying to put together some something for them to, for them to use our, some kind of project for them to use our grain. And so um, the, first, the first project that they, they were able to do is actually, they called it Day Spring. Um, and it's kind of their, uh, was one of their early kind of farm, farm to table beers. I think they have several of them now, but, but we were kind of one of the, one of the first, which is, which is a, huge, a huge honor to, to, be, uh, 
to be able to do that. And they've they've just they've really throughout the years they've really made a huge a huge effort to to use as much of our as much of our grain as they possibly can. And every year it's it's a little bit more as they kind of learn to use our grain as we learn to grow better grain that's that's better for for what they're doing. Um, they're able to they're able to make better use of it as well. So it's it's kind of a, a growing relationship. The value of those beers becomes so special because when I'm talking to the farmers, again, I can help them kind of plan for next season and choose to add more plants to what they, they grow or uh, help them kind of develop their farm. And through that, I know that I'm going to get a better product from them and it's going to in turn help me make a better product. And that throughput means that I'm not getting fruit that ripened on the truck on the way to me. I'm getting fruit that ripened in the field and on the truck on the way to me, the farmer's driving and he's going to hand it off to me. Um, and the farmer is able to look at stuff he's growing and talk to me uh, about what they're making and growing and how the season's going. And it has a direct effect on us. We wouldn't be able to do what we're doing without all of our, without our restaurants, our bakeries, our breweries. I mean, it's just, that's, we, from, from, from the very beginning, we've certainly seen the importance of, of local agriculture and, and the, the driving force of, of or what's, what helps support local agriculture is, is local businesses that, that, that value what we're doing. And, uh, you know, we could, we could potentially make a living, uh, you know, selling commodity crops. It wouldn't be my preference, but you know, there's there's the the added benefit of dealing locally. Is I, I I know these people. These people are my friends. Yeah, friendships is important to us. Friendship in itself is an important thing to us. There's a better way of life than separation, individualism, entitlement. Uh, all those things that we've seen have negative consequences in the world in which we live. Creature Comforts has made made a lot of efforts throughout the years. Um, to really support local farmers, and not just not just us as as a provider of, of grain, but they they seek to try and source as much of their as much of their in, ingredients as possible from from local farms or local producers. We've used honey from a local farm, and when we released the beer, we had the the honey uh, farmer here, uh, so people could buy his honey, uh, talk to him. Um, try the beer and just, you know, we try to draw that full circle. The slow food movement, local food movement has caught on in the last uh, uh, years. I think more so, uh, m more than just uh, restaurant owners and bakeries and uh, breweries, consumers, people who use who drink beer, who go to these restaurants that we, who, who eat the bread, um, they do look out for that kind of thing more than they used to. And you, you hear people mentioning your name uh, when you meet them at uh, some, some joint event or you know, go to the Athens Farmer's Market on Saturdays. And uh, so I, had, I had a day spring uh, last week. That's really good beer. I had a mutual as well. That's really good beer. I had one of those. Uh, Stone ground, that's really good stuff. So yes, it is, it is good to have people develop an interest in uh, uh, things being grown locally. It's not simply a matter of economics, it's a matter of people supporting uh, farms and farmers, and uh, it's, it's a good thing. Early on, um, when we started this company, we did a few things. Well, one, we set up these pillars. They're basically core values um, of the founders of this company and how we wanted the company to rely back on as we move forward. And one of those things was community. It was very important for us to be a part of that. And I also just had this resonating in my mind, the, the Spider-Man, with great power comes great responsibility. It's like it's, it's on us as being new people in this community to to really not be some outsiders coming in just to make some beer, make some money, but to really put good back in here. Particularly for us, when we first started out, uh, they were they were one of the biggest users of our, users of our products, and uh, it really helped uh, to get us to get us going. It was a real shot in the arm to have such you know regular large orders, and it, it really helped to kind of helped us get established. It's awesome. Every time you can see the whole circle connect and. Uh, particularly like 
when, I mean, I, I love it even more when we get a beer to a farmer, but when a farmer can be here and also see people enjoy that, where it's like literally going from, this is something you worked on for half a year or whatever to grow this crop. I worked on making this beer for a year, year and a half. Um, and then people are now able to enjoy it and it becomes this part of fellowship of just sitting at the table and talking to your friends and whatnot. Oh, it's fun. It, it, especially when I say, this is the best beer I've ever had. Oh, you know. Uh, it's great to see people enjoying what you do and uh, say, hey, that's a good product. You guys do good work. Uh, that's a lot of gratification that comes from that, uh, to have people uh, drinking beer named Dayspring or Mutualism or something of that nature. It, it's fun. It's, it's good. It's, it's great to see people enjoying what you do. Seeing people just have that moment where they, you know, they take that first sip and you can see them, you know, have a visceral reaction to enjoying something. Um, that's certainly why I got into making beer, but then when you pull it in where the farmer's involved too, then it just becomes like this awesome like hug on your soul. Not to get cheesy, but I mean, it really is. Or it's just like, man, that feels, that feels really good. They see the importance of, of local agriculture and really supporting the local, local farms, moving away from industrialized commercial farming to people who have responsible farming practices and, and produce a, a top quality product. And that, that to them is what matters. Now, I love the environmental aspect of this, where not only one, are we paying less for, or using less carbon emissions to get it to us, uh, but we're working with sustainable growers that are uh, generally, you know, they're putting less chemicals into the ground, they're using less wastewater. You know, a lot of these guys and gals are very uh, earthly minded in the sense of, um, you know, how can we do this sustainably and on ground that is going to continue to give us uh, nourishment and food and crops for many, many years to come. And let's farm that way instead of, you know, I think you got to this industrial way of farming, you know, starting in the 50s and 60s where people just started saying like, how can we maximize what we get out of the ground? Not really thinking like, okay, in 100 years, does that mean that this is going to be just wasteland with no nutrients left? You know, let's figure out how we can continue this going. Unfortunately, a lot of it has to do with a lot of it has to do with politics. A lot of it has to do with who's paying who. Um, but that's that I think for us is is a is a is a driving force is trying to in, in reclaiming a better way of life. We do want to be we do want to be conscious about um, about where where we're spending our resources. You know, are we are we are we being responsible? Are we being good stewards? Are we um, are we you know, benefiting our community or are we benefiting ourselves? We have been as sustainably minded as possible as a very young company uh, making the investments as we can. We do things like reclaiming heat off of our brewing process to heat up uh, the next batch is water. We try to just conserve. Generally water is a huge resource that we're using and if you can use less for rinsing that's one of the sort of lowest hanging fruit that you can uh, pursue as a brewer to be more sustainable. Um, we started hearing more and more from our employees that they wanted to do everything that they could and they were spending extra time even outside of work to try to figure out ways that we could side stream our wastewater or potentially use less natural gas to heat our work during the brewing process. So there was all of this excitement um, that was sort of bubbling up. And that's something that you know we're working on here as well is looking out to the future, developing a sustainability team, figuring out how we can use less water, use more off the grid power, you know, get solar and wind involved, things like that. You know, we're always interested and luckily as we grow, that's something we have more opportunity to do. After the break, we'll see how Creature Comforts connects consumers with local farmers not only through their beer, but also through hosting the Athens Farmers Market every Wednesday. Stay tuned, Grow will be right back. Welcome back to Grow. We're at the Athens Farmer's Market, hosted by Creature Comforts. So the 
farmer's market used to be um, over by City Hall, and it was just not a great setup. There wasn't a whole lot of space. It was on the sidewalk kind of situation. And, you know, we had this parking lot, which is kind of uncommon for this, you know, area of downtown Athens. Um, and so we met uh, Jan, who is uh, one of the, I believe he's probably on the board of directors of the Athens Farmer's Market through using local coffee. He also owns a local coffee company, Thousand Faces. He was saying, you know, we need a new place to do this. Would you, you know, be open to trying it out? And we said 100% yes. We do an ongoing series of Farmer's Market beers um, where we just try to do quick beers where we say this is only available on Wednesday while the Farmer's Market is here and we'll call it the Farmer's Market Series Beer. And we'll put local ingredients in it and that really helps to kind of draw that immediate connection. And then as we go long term, you know, we try to, as much as possible, talk about the local producers when we produce our, and promote that beer. Um, we try to put their names on the bottles. We try to really integrate the full story and when we release it, talk about it often so that people can start to draw that connection and that story and realize that this is important. They'll come up to us and they'll say, are you guys the day spring from the, the Creature Comforts got their wheat from us? Yes, we are. And, you know, there's, there's a light that kind of like pops up, you know, like it's just kind of like, you know, just like, ah, made that connection. It's, you know, it, it really kind of helping to close the circle, you know, to just to helps, helps us, you know, in the end for, you know, for the end users. And again, it comes back to those, those relationships as we, you know, that's what, that's what drives what we do, is, um, is, is building relationships with other people. Life together instead of apart is one of the most important, it's, it's not, it's both the vehicle uh, and, the, and the consequence or the fruit. Uh, learning to live together is important.